recall from last time, we stated and proved Bazoo's identity. If M and N are non-zero integers, then there exist integers J and K, such that J times N plus K times N is equal to the greatest common divisor of M and N. Now, the statement of the identity offers no help in how to find J and K. So for that, we have to go back to the proof. Buried in the proof that we used, we'll have a method for computing the greatest common divisor of M and N without factoring M and N. So if M and N are very large numbers, okay, we may not have access to a large list of primes. This is a way to get greatest common divisor without having that list. Now, this method we're gonna call the Euclidean algorithm for the integers. Once we have the Euclidean algorithm, we can take another look at Bazoo's identity, and that'll give us a way to find the J and the K. Now, for the Euclidean algorithm, what we'll do is repeated long division. So, assumptions we'll start with. I'll assume that M is positive and strictly less than the absolute value of N. For shorthand, I'll call the greatest common divisor of M and N, G. So, start with long division. So I'll have that N is equal to Q1 times M plus remainder R1. So that means R1 is gonna be between zero and M, okay, including the zero. Because greatest common divisor divides N and M, it must divide R1. So if G divides R1, we shift everything to the left by one, do another long division. So the M is equal to Q2 times R1 plus R2. So our remainder R2 is gonna be between zero and R1, including zero. Because G divides M and R1, it must divide R2. Shift everything to the left. We have R1 equals Q3, R2 plus R3. And then we see R3 less than R2. G divides R3 and so on and so on. Now, eventually, we're gonna to get to an equation where I have r sub l minus one equals q l plus one, r sub l plus zero. Okay, r's are strictly decreasing and greater than or equal to zero, so eventually we're gonna to go to zero. Now, when I hit zero, the claim is the greatest common divisor of m and n is equal to the last remainder that we've calculated. because the greatest common divisor and the remainders are non-negative integers. To show equality, it's enough to show mutual divisibility. Now, we already have that G divides each of the remainders, so we only have to show that the last remainder divides G. To do that, we work from the bottom up in our list of equations. The last equation says R sub L minus one equals Q sub L R sub L. So, that means R sub L divides R sub L minus one. We go to the equation above the last one. Okay, so it'll be in this form. We have that R sub L divides this term and this term. So it must divide R sub L minus two. Go to the equation above that one. Because R sub L divides, okay, R sub L minus one and R sub L minus two it'll have to divide r sub l minus three, and we repeat in that manner. So we're eventually gonna work all the way up to the top of the list, which will mean that r sub l divides m and r sub l divides n. That means r sub l is gonna divide the greatest common divisor. So that's our result. Now, for an example, let's consider greatest common divisor of 168 and 105. We factor, okay, 168 is three times seven times eight. 105 is three times five times seven. So considering the factors, greatest common divisor is gonna be a 21. Now, using the Euclidean algorithm, okay, first division, I have 168, 105, remainder 63. We shift, so I have 105, 63, remainder's 42. 
we shift 63 42 remainder is 21 then we shift at 42 two 21s remainder is zero so that means greatest common divisor is the last remainder before the zero which is 21 and that agrees with our work here let's apply the euclidean algorithm to find the j and k and bazoo's identity now from the Euclidean algorithm, we're going to get a list of equations. So our goal is to put R sub L, the greatest common divisor, in terms of M and N. So our work is to get an equation where we've eliminated R1 through R sub L minus 1. For here, we'll convince ourselves that it can be done when we have two, three, or four equations. Then in general, there's an algorithm and three different ways to proceed. Now, when we have two equations, okay, we know in the first equation, all we need to do is to push the term with the m to the other side. Then we have an equation like in Bazou's identity. When I have three equations, what we'll do, okay, note we want to eliminate r1. If I take a look at the second equation, if I get q2 r1, then I can substitute that with m minus r2. So I multiply the first equation by Q2. That's going to give me Q2n equal to Q1 Q2m plus Q2r1. And then we substitute. So in our final equation, okay, we note we have everything in terms of R2, M, and N. Okay, and then the Qs are just going to be the coefficients. So Bazou's identity holds in this case. For four equations, okay, this is the case of our example. I want to eliminate R1 and R2. So, same idea as before. First, we go after R2 by multiplying the first equation by Q2. Now, we write it out as before, and then I substitute Q2R1 with M minus R2. I want to get rid of R2, so we're going to multiply this new equation by Q3. We work that out, then we know we can substitute the Q3 R2, which now is a minus sign, with R3 minus R1. We're almost there. I need to get rid of this R1. So to do that, we go back to the first equation, and then we can replace R1 with N minus Q1M. Then our final equation is in the form that we want. Of course, we have to separate everything out to make it look like Bazou's identity. If we straighten the last equation out, Bazou's identity takes this form. Now, if we look at our example, so here we have m equal to 105, n equal to 168. Okay, note m has to be the smaller number. Greatest common divisor is 21. So what do we have? When we worked out the Euclidean algorithm, the q's were equal to 1, except for the last one, q4, which was equal to 2. So using our formula here, we have 2 times n minus 3m is equal to g. So if I work this out, 2 times 168, 336. 3 times 105 is 315. We take the difference, we get 21, which is equal to our g. So Bazou's identity checks out.